Uh, today we had a report from the Department of Justice Special Counsel Robert Hur, essentially clearing President Joe Biden of criminal conduct in the mishandling of classified documents, but making certain allegations that the president found objectionable. He held a very memorable press conference just recently. Uh, we want to bring in now Dr. Isaac Hale, assistant professor of politics at Occidental College, to talk to us all about it. Dr. Hale, first of all, thank you so much for being with us tonight to talk about this. Thank you for having me. So, uh, as I just mentioned, this special counsel report comes out. You are familiar with it. Just give the viewers at home a sense of what it says, what it does do, and what it doesn't do uh, from a President Biden perspective. Right. So, most importantly, there's not going to be any attempt to press charges against the president for mishandling uh, of documents that were found at President Biden's home. So, in terms of the investigation itself, it appears to be over. Uh, the political consequences are a whole other story. There were several characterizations of President Biden which called into question his memory and his mental faculties. And that's something that voters are already concerned about and is, are certainly fears that the Biden campaign is going to be trying to allay in the coming weeks and months. Uh, Dr. Hill, one of the quotes from Special Counsel Hur's report uh, says that President Biden is an elderly man with a poor memory. And it also alleges that President Biden misremembers or, or has a difficult time recalling the precise date of the death of his son. Let's play a little bit of that press conference, because as you're talking about the political calculations of the report itself, there are also political ramifications to this press conference we just heard. So let's hear a little bit of that, and then we'll talk about it on the backside. I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away. Close watchers of the White House say this is a very controlled administration when it comes to these sorts of appearances, but this one was hastily pulled together. It seemed President Biden wanted to clear the air or at least suggest that uh, this was out of line and that he does have a good memory. But it also went off the rails a little bit in the sense that he misremembered uh, the name of the president of Egypt calling al the president of Mexico, which might help make the case for people who say that President Biden's cognitive faculties are in some sense of decline. Just talk about the political calculus of holding the press conference, which wasn't necessary, and what we see coming out of it. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that this mix-up between the Mexican and Egyptian presidents comes in the same week that he's met, mixed up former and current French and German political leaders as well. So this is, um, you know, a continued trend in some of President Biden's public appearances. In addition to, I think, the very emotional response he had to being accused of misremembering the date of his son's death, uh, the report also mentions that President Biden struggled to recollect exactly the time when he was vice president to, to Barack Obama. Um, there's a quote in the report saying, in 2009, am I still vice president, right? And so I think he has a very forceful response when it comes to the death of his son. But there's some other details in the special prosecutor's report, which are uh, Democrats are going to be trying to do damage control on here. And they are already doing that. And they're also saying, the White House is saying, that reporters in the press and people like us are missing the fact that President Biden offered some interesting, sophisticated analysis of what was happening in Gaza. Yes, he misremembered the country, but he did know that al-Sisi is one of the leaders involved. Uh, it was the Egyptian president and the Mexican president, granted. But also that he was, in some sense, calling Israel to task for having gone too far in this conversation uh, over what's happening there in the Middle East. And I suppose, you know, when we, when we move forward, what is the president's play spinning out of this? I mean, this essentially there is a distinguishing between Biden and Trump's conduct, according to the special counsel. Uh, do you sense that he will stay on this topic or try and move past it? And what will the Republicans see in this as an opportunity? I think there's no question that Republicans are going to try to seize on perceptions that Biden is struggling with memory and that he is too old for the job. If you look at polls that uh, predate the release of this report, report. three quarters of Americans already express concerns about President Biden's age. Um, and that's going to be, you know, a major issue that Republicans are going to try to highlight, even though their own likely nominee, uh, former President Trump, is also uh, pretty up there in years as well. I think the Biden campaign is certainly going to be trying to highlight the legal troubles associated with former President Trump, which, again, polling shows uh, are much that Americans are much more concerned about than the investigation into current president Joe Biden. So that's one angle. I think they're going to be trying to have competing narratives. I think the other question that 
the Biden team is going to have to be considering in the next couple weeks and uh, coming months is whether to ramp up President Biden's public appearances in order to assuage concerns about his age and faculties, or whether they're going to try to continue to run a more low-key campaign. Yeah, it's very interesting to think about because in some senses this was an opportunity for President Biden to make some political points. He felt that that need because as we say, the special counsel's report is important for people to understand at home. There will be no criminal charges coming out of his handling of these classified documents. He also took some objection to some of the characterizations of those classified documents in the report. We can get to that another time. But Dr. Isaac Hale, uh, thank you so much for coming on tonight short notice to talk about the political ramifications of this. It's a huge story and really appreciate your insight and wisdom. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hale. And we have more coming up here on your evening. Stay with us.